Hello and welcome to MMA News Real Talk. I'm your host, Sebastian Mendel Martinez, longtime writer and reporter for MMA News. And yeah, this is where I give my unscripted, unedited, uh, unedited thoughts on all things MMA and combat sports. So, uh, wow, what an event. Let's just get into it. UFC 239, the event that delivered. Uh, I mean, this was a whole uh, MGM Grand Buffet that we got. Uh, hopefully some people will recognize that reference from a certain game-bred fighter. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we might as well just get into it. New UFC record, five seconds. Sorry, you know, reigning UFC champions, but Jorge Masvidal stole the show here. Wow. Five second knockout. And honestly, it was really just the referee was a little too far away to stop it in time. Uh, it easily could have been three or four seconds. Uh, I mean, when you look at how quickly Askin was out, I mean, he was out from the very first, I mean, from the knee, the, the follow-up punches were not necessary. I mean, if you're as, <laughs> like, as gritty and as real as, um, uh, as Masvidal is, then I, yeah, I guess it is necessary, but for the rest of us, no, those punches are not necessary. Uh, at the same time, I mean, Certain fighters are going to be like that. I mean, Masvidal, Khabib, there's some fighters who, I mean, they're just, they're that street, they're that real that, you know, they, they don't play around when they dislike somebody. It is full on real and they will, you know, you know, the bad blood does not just go away from them. So, I mean, wow, what a knockout. We've got, I mean, this does change things up a little bit in the division, I think. Myself included, many people were expecting Askren to win this and that it would perhaps set something up. Uh, now, uh, I mean, let's take a look at the UFC rankings really quick. Because as of now, I would say that Masvidal is the only real fighter who is like... He's the one who feels the closest right now. Uh, now, Colby Covington... He is uh, you know, still ranked at second place, but he is slated for a fight with Robbie Lawler. And, you know, it's not sure that he'll win. I mean, I do have uh, Colby Covington pick to win that. But, you know, we can't... Nothing is guaranteed in the sport, which we, you know, we see time and time again. Uh, I mean, Masvidal is definitely uh, in a great position now uh, at uh, ranking number four, coming off of his fantastic knockout. The thing is, Usman is injured. So I actually think that we will see a teammate versus teammate fight. I do think that we will see uh, Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal uh, face each other for the number one contender spot because uh, it seems like Usman, uh, Kamar Usman, the reigning welterweight champion, is going to be away for a while. So yeah, I actually think that is what's going to happen. Uh, but you know, just you know, Dana White, as he always says, we'll see what happens, and that's not really a whole lot more we can do than that. Uh, John Jones uh, defeated Tiago Santos via split decision. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sounding like the exact opposite of Dana White here, who thought that it was, you know, blasphemy that uh, one of the judges could have given uh, the fight to, to Santos. But in my opinion, for, call me crazy, but I think a split decision is like the most fair result in a way, because... Jones looked very beatable in that fight, to be honest, and it would be really interesting to see how that fight would have gone down had Thiago Santos not injured his knee in the very first round. Because even with a knee injury, a blatant knee injury, he was dangerous until the very last seconds of a fight. And it definitely felt like he, his shots did the more damage. Uh, I mean, so, admittedly, it's hard to look great against Thiago Santos, but John Jones did not look great. He did not look like the consensus pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world in that fight. And I mean, I guess looking at Thiago Santos' strengths, it is kind of hard to go in there and like look super dominant against a fighter like that, because I mean, you only really need to leave yourself open for one shot in order for everything to change. Uh, but with that said, I mean, I would say a, a very good showing for Thiago Santos, who's, you know, despite losing his stock, definitely went up. I mean, I'd say that the the first fight between John Jones and Alexander Gustafsson, uh, it felt more competitive in a sense, but this was definitely a very good showing from, uh, from Santos. 
Uh, and I mean, for Jones, obviously not an easy fight against uh, such an explosive fighter like Santos. Uh, but I don't know, I feel like he, he got stuck in a little bit of a defensive mode at times, which is understandable, but I still was expecting a little bit more output from Jones. Uh, I was exp I mean, There were moments where I felt like he perhaps held back a little bit, and uh, you know, it probably was part of a plan not to go too all out and not leave any openings for Santos. But uh, even so, uh, great showing for Santos, not super great showing for Jones, despite the fact that Jones won the fight. Uh, question now, like, who's left in light heavyweight? Uh, if we take a look at the rankings, we've got Daniel Cormier at number one. He's not going back to light heavyweight. Thiago Santos at number two, just defeated by Jones. Anthony Smith at number three. Yeah, he's coming off a win over Alexander Gustafsson, but he's not going to get a, a title shot again. Uh, not very soon, anyway. Dominic Reyes at fourth place. I feel like he is still one good, impressive victory away from a title shot, at least. Uh, especially considering the fact that his win over Volkan Ostemir was not very convincing and actually pretty controversial. So I think uh, Jones is probably going to sit out uh, for a while until we get a, a clear number one contender established. Uh, and in the co-main event, wow, Amanda Nunes, the GOAT. Uh, no beating around the bush here. I mean, she's defeated every single uh, female UFC champion in bantamweight and featherweight. And I mean, what a murderous row she's been through. I mean, she has knocked out Holly Holm, Chris Cyborg, Ronda Rousey, and submitted Misha Tate. Is that not like a list of like the greatest female fighters of all time? Wow, hats off to Amanda Nunes, and the fact that she she knocks Holly Holm out with a head kick, and then she says afterwards that she did it simply because she wanted to finish Holm in the same way that she uh, finished a lot of her fights. Wow, I mean, there's not a whole lot else you can say. I mean, it's gonna be hard to find contenders for Nunes. Uh, I know that uh, Katzengano is uh, without a doubt looking for a rematch because I mean she she TKO'd Amanda Nunes for the first time they fought. I'm sure that's a fight that Captain Ghana was uh, very interested in. Uh, otherwise we've got uh, Jermaine Durandamy who was up at first place in women's bantamweight. <sighs> not sure I'm I mean I'm personally not that interested uh, uh, in seeing a rematch there. Uh, Nunes won the first one pretty handily. I do think this this would be a different fight. I just I don't know. I mean, randomly, obviously, she's gonna fight Aspen Ladd up next. Uh, if Aspen Ladd wins, maybe that could be an interesting twist. You know, I got this sort of uh, up and coming, you know, young gun in the division. But I don't know. I, I just I can't see any threats for Amanda Nunes uh, in aside for perhaps Valentina Shevchenko. Uh, Shevchenko. If you ask me, she won the second fight. Again, I mean, if I were to have been a judge at that fight, I would have given it to Shevchenko. That said, it was a close fight. It wasn't a scandalous decision, uh, but you know, it was close enough to a point where I at least was leaning towards Shevchenko. Now, will we see a third fight there? I don't know. I mean, I kind of feel like Shevchenko is still kind of getting established, you know, in flyweight, and I mean. I still, the way I see it, there are still some contenders to, to deal with there. Uh, you know, Joanne Calderwood's on her way up. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, her next fight is going to be against uh, Liz Carmouche, who actually has defeated Shevchenko before, but it was way, way back. And, uh, I don't know, me personally, I don't see Shevchenko losing uh, in flyweight uh, for a very, very long time. And so... Basically, yeah, that was a huge caveat there, but uh, Amanda Nunes, wow, I mean, without a doubt, the greatest female fighter of all time. There's, there's no discussion now. So, yeah, let's leave that discussion. Jan Blachowicz, uh, KTFO'd uh, Luke Rockhold, and that was a bad knockout. I mean, in three out of his four last fights now, Rockhold has been pretty brutally t uh, KO'd. Uh, and I know that Dana Wyatt was very vocal about uh, him wanting Rockhold to retire. He said that Rockhold broke his jaw in this fight. Second time he's done that. 
And I mean, if that is the case, honestly, it might be a good idea for Rockwell to, to hang it up. I mean, at the end of the day, he is one who's going to make his own decisions. Um, he didn't look, I mean, he didn't look bad in that fight necessarily, but it didn't really feel like he threatened Blakovic's. Um, I just, I, I felt like there was a power disparity there. Uh, Rockhold opened very strong, he had a lot of good kicks, but it, nothing really just seemed to like rattle Blakovic the same way that his shots rattled uh, Rockhold. And yeah, I don't know, it's it's always tough to, to hang it up. I mean, look at BJ Penn still, still going uh, despite a seven fight losing streak. Uh, was you know only Rockhold knows in the end what what he truly will and wants to do. Uh, but with that said, Jan Blakovic, uh, I don't see him going for a title shot yet. Uh, I mean, because he's admittedly he will probably climb up the rankings a little bit. He's at sixth place now. Would not be surprised to see him perhaps settle on uh, fourth place, something like that. Now, should that happen? I think probably a fight between Jan Blakovic and Anthony Smith would make a lot of sense. Um, the winner there, especially if it's Blakovic, would probably be the consensus easiest to uh, easiest guy to challenge for the title, unless we want to put uh, Dominic Reyes up against one of those. And yeah, we'll see. But Blakovic, not yet, unfortunately uh, for him. Uh, I know he definitely wants a title shot. He was. Well, not definitely, because when asked about what was next, he was like, yes, maybe title shot, I don't know, we'll see. So, I don't know, he wasn't, like, screaming for it or anything like that. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, very good showing. Uh, I recall, I mean, I thought the fight was going to be a little bit closer. Uh, I thought we were going to see a little bit more power uh, and speed from Rockhold. We didn't really, uh, but either way, fantastic fight for, uh, for Blachowicz. And uh, only greatness awaits from here. I, there's, I mean, there's, he's going to get a, uh, some very, a very big fight after this. I can guarantee you that. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, allergies are still kicking my ass. So, yeah, you'll have to excuse that. And in our first fight on the main card, Michael Chiesa manhandled Diego Sanchez. That was about as one-sided a fight as you can get. Just as soon as Sanchez got the slightest thing going, you know, in a scramble or, you know, uh, just anything going off the ground, it was like Chiesa just flowed and countered perfectly. Uh, I gotta say that Chiesa is one of the most exciting grappling styles uh, in the division for sure. Uh, he looked fantastic and he looked huge. I cannot believe he used to fight at lightweight. Uh, it makes no sense to me. Uh, but that was a, a very good chunk for him. I mean, I think most people were obviously expecting him to beat Diego Sanchez, uh, who, uh, despite being a Jedi, according to his interview with Ariel Helwani, uh, yeah, despite him being a Jedi, he could not uh, mind trick or force his way, force victory his way over Kies, so. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the division here. Kies, uh, actually not ranked. Uh, as of now, admittedly, the two fighters that he has defeated or welterweight have not been ranked either, which is Carlos Condit and now Diego Sanchez. Those are two, two veterans, but with all respect to both of them, and I really do like both of them, uh, they're not exactly at the top of their game. So I think the next fight for Kiesa will definitely be some kind of uh, big name fight at welterweight. Then I don't really know who it's gonna be. I mean. A lot of guys are tied up right now. Uh, Damien Maya, I don't know. I'm, I'm not interested in that fight, to be completely honest. Uh, Maya is also kind of one of those really good veterans, but kind of on his way out, despite you know fighting very well as of late. Uh, but I would personally rather see Kiesa up against uh, like a more sort of up and coming guy. Uh, you know, maybe a Panzanibio or. So, someone along those lines, uh, perhaps if, if uh, Vicente Luke gets past Mike Perry in Uruguay, I think that would be a very fun fight. Uh, you'd have two really good talents up against each other, two well-rounded guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, regardless, uh, just like with Blachowicz, I mean, greatness awaits uh, Kiesa. He looks fantastic at Welkowicz. He should have been there a long time ago, and uh, I'm really excited to see where he goes from here. So if we just take a little quicker run through the uh, through the undercard here, 
Uh, Arnold Allen, great showing, winning every round against her veteran Gilbert Melendez. Melendez did not look that good. I mean, I, I, it was like the first opening two minutes that he had... Uh, but he had some proper offense going, and after that, Arnold Allen just took over. Uh, I mean, Arnold Allen actually has one of the longest active win streaks in the UFC right now. And um, I'm pretty sure in his next fight, he is going to get a, a proper, highly ranked, well-established featherweight fighter. Uh, Marlon Vera looked, uh, looked good against uh, Nolan Hernandez. Uh, we had Claudio Gadella, uh, Cl Claudio Gadella uh, pick up a nice win over Randa Marcos also, which I kind of expected. And I was right about uh, Song Yadong, who, uh, damn, Song Yadong dropped a bomb on Alejandro Perez. Uh, perfect overhand, right? It was just, yeah, uh, Song Yadong is, is looking like a bantamweight to keep an eye on. Uh, he's got four straight wins now in the UFC, three of those by finish, two of those finishes knockouts. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to fight at the China card because I don't think he got banged up in this fight. And I'm pretty sure we're going to give him, or they should anyway, give him a, a, a proper test now. Uh, I mean, with all respect to Alejandro Perez, uh, I would kind of like to see Song Yadong up against uh, an established bantamweight fighter now. Uh, somebody with, uh, yeah, a little bit more experience uh, up against top tier competition. And let's actually take a quick look at the bantamweight rankings. I mean, is it too soon to give him someone ranked? <sighs> Probably. I mean, honestly, the bantamweight division is is uh, stronger than it's been in a long time. Uh, Ricky Simone, he's finding Uriah Faber. Thomas Almeida. Okay, uh, admittedly, Perez was actually ranked at 13, so uh, we will see Song Yadong break into the top 15 ranking after this. Um... Uh, I would not hate a fight with John Dodson. Uh, I hate to say this about Dodson, but it kind of feels like he has become a little bit of a stepping stone or a gatekeeper in the division. Uh, but that would either way be a fight that, uh, that I would be interested in. I think Dodson, you know, win, lose, or draw, he always he always puts up a good fight. He's been in there with some of the best. And uh, I would definitely not hate seeing a fight between those guys. Uh, Rob Font is also a guy who admittedly not as established. It hasn't been in the UFC for as long as Dodson. But is also a, a very good talent to keep an eye on. And uh, yeah, I would not be mad at a uh, Rob Font versus Song Yadong matchup either. But yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are going to see Song Yadong fight of the uh, upcoming China card anyway. Uh, Edmund Shabazian defeated Jack Marshman by first round submission. 1 minute 12 seconds in. Very nicely done. Uh, chance for encounter. Uh, spoiled the, uh, the follow up fight from Ismail Nurdiev, uh, also called the Austrian Wonder Boy. Uh, he had a fantastic showing in his debut against uh, Michel Prezeris. Uh, but uh, yeah, he got shut down here with some uh, with uh, the strong, balanced wrestling base of the uh, chance for encounter. So we'll see how he uh, recuperates from this. And uh, then we saw also Julia Vila uh, defeat Pani Kianzad via decision. Uh, exciting fight, pretty close fight. Uh, hardly a bad showing for uh, for Kianzad despite losing. Uh, I thought she had a lot of good moments there as well. But uh, yeah, Julia Vila proved why she, why the UFC are so hot on her, and why so many people are talking about her. I mean, she she looked very very good. She looked composed. She looked just yeah. She she seemed you can despite her not being that like deep into her career. She just she's got this kind of like seasoned way of looking at things. Like it doesn't feel like she gets int intimidated at all. She uh, she keeps a clear head in in the, in the fight, and uh, yeah, she's definitely a bantamweight to keep an eye on. And uh, so yeah, I mean those were those were the fights, and uh, what an event! Uh, we did not get a fight of a night a bon a bonus awarded. There were, however, four performance bonuses given to Amanda Nunes, Jorge Masvidal, Jan Blachowicz, and Song Yadon, uh, which are obviously the most yeah the the clearest contenders for. Uh, uh, for performance bonuses and also the only actually the only four knockouts on the card but wow were those good knockouts but yeah i mean we got to see some interesting stories come out of this i mean john jones not looking invincible like he has in so many of his fights uh does this mean did we get like oh now we have a formula to defeating john jones no not really tiago santos is a, he's a special animal you know he's uh 
there's not a lot of fighters in the division that have the same skill set that he does. But, I mean, we definitely, we did see, I mean, it's like I was talking about, the, the key to victory there was pressure. I mean, if you can just, if you can get Jones out of his game, if you can, you know, make him back up, if you can make sure that he doesn't establish his distance and start getting his combinations off, that is the way to beat him. I mean, admittedly, that's kind of always been the way to beat him. I mean, let's face it, you shut down somebody's offense, chances are we're not going to win. So it's not something specifically so for Jones, but, we, you know, we got to see Thiago Santos do that a little bit. Uh, there were definitely a lot of shots that he threw at Jones, which seemed to have a lot of power uh, in them. That said, well, I mean, Jones has got one hell of a chin. He took a lot of the best shots, like a champ, like a true champ. And, uh, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm actually interested in seeing who Jones fights next, and uh, and regardless of who it is, I'm pretty sure we're going to take some pages out of both Alexander Gustafsson's and Thiago Santos's book here uh, when it comes to approaching uh, Jones. Uh, and yeah, Masvidal, what a G, Cuban Jesus, as Instagram is calling him. I don't know, I, I have not been able to stop looking at memes and, and stuff like that uh, of Masvidal. There was a really good... Uh, um, I forget his name now, but there's this Instagram guy who makes a really good uh, sort of stylized highlights of fights where he adds a bunch of animation and stuff. And uh, he did a great one of Masvidal and Askren, uh, which involved some uh, Mufasa making his second look or his sec I don't know what do you call it his sophomore appearance in MMA in real talk. And yes, this is a Simpsons shirt for those of you wondering. <clears throat> threw me off my game, Mufasa. But, I mean, yeah, uh, there's a very hilarious one that combines UFC with Rick and Morty, one of my favorite shows. Uh, you can go to my Instagram for that one. Uh, I forget, Yeah, I can't remember the name right now, the artist who does those animations, but hilarious stuff. And, uh, so, yeah, those are my biggest takeaways. I mean, uh, I would say that, uh, I mean... The champions obviously come out on top. The Jones with a couple of question marks. Nunes with exclamation marks. Uh, and uh, Masvidal and Blachowicz coming out looking very, very good and very, very, very close to a title shot. And yeah, so that about does it for this episode of MMA News Real Talk. Uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts were on the fights and the event overall in the comments below. It's always interesting to know what you guys think about the topics we discuss here on my channel. And if you do have any ideas or suggestions for content you'd like to see more of or something like that, by all means hit us up because we do read the stuff and, uh, you know, whenever it's constructed and we do take it to us in those cases. So yeah, I'm your host, Sebastian Vandal Martinez, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.